for she will never love any man. When I said this, the soul groaned aloud, and then remained silent. In a little while, the angel came back, and I saw that his face was no longer clouded with anger. Hear the judgment of Allah, he said. Inasmuch as thou tookest the law upon thyself, which belonged to Allah alone, thou deservest to die. But, in so far as thou hast indeed slain a hypocrite and an unbeliever, thou hast deserved life. Allah is just, merciful, and forgiving. It is not meet that in thy lot there should be nothing but reward or nothing but punishment. Therefore, thy shalt not yet receive a soul. Go hence to the third heaven, and when the angel Azrael shall be at leisure, he will write thy name in the book of the living. Then thou shalt return hither, and go into the city of Riyadh, bearing gifts, and Zahoa will accept thee in marriage, though she love thee not, for Allah commands that it be so. But if in the course of time this virtuous woman be moved to love, and say to thee, Khalid, I love thee, then at that moment thou shalt receive an immortal soul, and if thy deeds be good, thy soul shall enter paradise with the believers. But if not, thou shalt burn. Thus saith Allah. Thus art thou rewarded indeed, but wisely and temperately, since thou hast not obtained life directly, but only the hope of life. Then the angel departed again, leading the way. But the soul mocked me. Thou that sayest the Zahawah, that she will never love any man, thou art fallen into thine own trap. For now, if she love thee not, thou must perish. Truly, Allah heard my prayer. But I was filled with thankfulness and departed after the angel, leaving the soul sitting alone upon the red sand. Thus have I told thee my history, O Azrael, and now I pray thee to write my name in the book of the living that I may fulfill the command of Allah and go my way to the city of Rihad. Then Azrael again took up his pen to write in the book. Now thou art become a living man, though thou hast as yet no soul, he said, and thou art subject to death by the sword and by sickness and by all those evils which spring up in the path of the living. And the day of thy death is already known to Allah, who knows all things, but he is merciful and will doubtless grant thee a term of years in which to make thy trial. Nevertheless, be swift in thy journey and speedy in all thou doest, for though mortal man may live forever hereafter in glory, his years on earth are but as a breath which springs up in the desert towards evening and is gone before the stars appear. Khalid made a salutation before Azrael and went out of the third heaven and passed through the second, which is of burnished steel, 
and through the first, in which the stars hang by golden chains, where Adam waits for the day of the resurrection, and at the gate he found the angel who had led him, and who now lifted him in his arms and bore him back to the red desert, for as he was now a mortal man, he could no longer move through the air like the genii between the outer gate of heaven and the earth nor could he any longer see the soul of the indian prince sitting upon the sand though it was still there but the angel was visible to him so they stood together and the angel spoke to him thou art now a mortal man he said and subject to time as to death to thee it seems but a moment since we went up together to the gate and yet thou wast standing ten months and thirteen days before Azrael, and of the body of the man whom thou slewest only the bones remain so saying the angel blew upon the red sand and khalid saw the white bones of the prince in the place where he had laid his body so he was first made conscious of time nearly a year has passed and though allah be very merciful to thee yet he will assuredly not suffer thee to live beyond the time of other men make haste therefore and depart upon thine errand yet because thou art come into the world a grown man having neither father nor mother nor inheritance i will give thee what is most necessary for thy journey then the angel took a handful of leaves from a gata bush close by and gave them to khalid and as he gave them they were changed into a rich garment and into linen and into a shawl with which to make a turban and shoes of red leather clothe thyself with these said the angel he broke a twig from the bush and placed it in khalid's hand immediately it became a sabre of damascus steel and a sheath of leather with a belt take the sword which is of such fine temper that it will cleave through an iron headpiece and a shirt of mail but remember that it is not a sword made by magic let thy magic reside in thy arm wield it for the faith and put thy trust in allah afterwards the angel took up a locust that was asleep on the sand waiting for the warmth of the morning sun the angel held the locust up before khalid and then let it fall but as it fell it became at once a beautiful bay mare with round black eyes wide apart and an arching tail which swept down to the sand like a river of silk take this mare said the angel she is of the pure breed of najed and as swift as the wind but mortal like thyself but how shall i ride her without saddle or bridle asked khalid that is true answered the angel he laid leaves of the god upon the mare's back and they became a saddle and placed a twig in her mouth and it turned into a bit and a bridle khalid thanked the angel and mounted farewell and prosper and put thy trust in allah and forget not the day of judgment the angel said and immediately returned to paradise so khalid was left alone in the red desert a living man obliged to shift for himself liable to suffer hunger and thirst or to be slain by robbers with no worldly possessions but his sword his bay mare and the clothes on his back he knew moreover 
that he was more than two hundred miles from the city of Riyadh, and he knew that he could not accomplish this journey in less than four days. For, when he was one of the genii, he had often watched men toiling through desert on foot and on camels and on horses, and had laughed with his companions at the slow progress they made. But now it was no laughing matter, for he had forgotten to ask the angel for dates and water, or even for a few handfuls of barley meal. He turned the mare's head westward of the goat, in which is the polar star, for he remembered that when he had carried away the Indian prince, 